I can conclude them into two words. That's imaging and oncology. It's never how fast you run that will drive the success, is whether you can continue and go to the end. So I always believe that images have a lot of things. One image is better than 1,000 words. This is why I choose radiology as my specialty. Like oncology is no longer um, really a type of disease um, because oncology that also combined uh, a lot of knowledge together. Only research can um, improve the current practice. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Onco Daily. Uh, today is one of our series on Onco influencers, and it, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome a good friend of mine, Yan Liu from China. Welcome, Yan. Thank you very much for having the time for us. I'll just do a small introduction about you, and then we'll go to our interview, okay? Thank you. Thank so you Dr. Yan Liu is the chief medical officer of Mitro. She is a radiologist with passion for innovation, driven by her extensive career and broad recognition in medical imaging. During the recent 15 years, Dr. Liu has dedicated her work to the integration of imaging in multicentral clinical trials and the development of AI-based software as medical device. Previously, Dr. Liu served as the CMO of Median Technologies, where she oversaw the imaging implementation of 100 plus clinical trials and supported 17 regulatory approvals using imaging endpoint data. Before joining Median, Dr. Liu had roles as the head of translational research, radiotherapy, and imaging department of EURTC, uh, European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer. In this role, she and her team established a tumor biobank to promote translational research, created benchmark for radiotherapy quality assurance, and implemented novel imaging biomarkers to accelerate drug development. Dr. Liu completed her medical studies at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University College of Medicine, where she also received her Master's of Medicine in Imaging Diagnosis and Second Master's of Drug Development Science from the King's College of London. Dr. Liu also studied brain functional imaging at the Erasmus Hospital in Brussels, where she earned her PhD in Medical Sciences from University Libre de Brussels. Dr. Liu has published book chapters and more than 40 peer-reviewed papers in high-impact journals such as Lancet Oncology and Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. She is a member of RESIST uh, Core Working Group, the chair of the URTC Imaging Group. She was in 2016-2017 an advisor for the Chinese National Medical Products Administration to develop the standard technical guidelines for imaging evaluation procedures in clinical trials of anti-neoplastic drugs. Uh, I can continue many more, and it's going to take a long time for us, but uh, thank you, Jan, for, for again, for being with us. And you have, like, really accomplished a lot in a very short period of time. Let's dive into your story of success, if you don't mind. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you're right. I'm very happy to share, yeah. Uh, Jan, uh, can you, I mean... You are, uh, besides all these accomplishments, you are also a great mom of three children. And I mean, wh what was your experience, personal experience and this career growth and being a foreigner going to uh, Europe and what, what was your key of success? Thank you, that's, that's very um, interesting and, and fashion. So indeed, Thanks for that long introduction. But I think if I summarize my career path, I can conclude them into two words. That's imaging and oncology. So this is the rather cap that guide me, move forward for the past 20 years. I never give up. Despite I have a family behind. As you said, that to be a full-time mother, um, also a lead of a department um, and a company, that's sometimes it's not easy to have everything well organized. So I think time management is important and also understand the priority 
and continue move, it's, I think interestingly is, it's never how fast you run that will drive the success, is whether you can continue and go to the end. Um, I may have a small story to share with you because I always feel myself as a superwoman, I can do anything, anytime. Um, but since that time, I realized I also have limitation. Uh, at that time, I just changed a new job and I was excited. And also I was pregnant of my third child. In the meantime, I'm uh, uh, finishing my second master at King's College of London. So uh, I was pregnant. I have a big belly and I traveled from uh, um, between Brussels and London uh, once per month. And I also finished all my modulars uh, within the time. So I say, OK, now my last step is just to give birth. Then I will have three months maternity leave. I can finish my uh, um, my 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 thesis, my um, my dissemination uh, in three months. So that would be the perfect timing. Um, and I think this this was a perfect plan. But in reality, um, the day when I give birth, when I did it on my third child, my husband was also uh, uh, hospitalized, and uh, he was attacked by Lyme disease. And he also had the neural symptom and uh, he was emergently uh, administrated to the third floor um, at St. Luc. And um, at the same day, um, I give birth. That was quite tough because um, as a doctor, I know what it means, Lyme disease with uh, uh, CNS uh, symptoms. I was quite worried. And when I come back with uh, two kids at home with one baby crying and my husband was still in the hospital, at that time I realized uh, you can never do everything uh, at the same time. Sometimes we need to pick up uh, priority. And that time I choose my, my family. So I postponed my, uh, my uh, delivery of my thesis. I did not touch my computer for three months. And it was also the first time I did not work during maternity leave and I stayed with my family. And after that, uh, um, it's very, very difficult. Um, when we move very fast, it's like a plan. And when you have the plan stop, either it will, it will crash. Or, uh, there was no kind of uh, uh, in between and you can slow down. So um, I put the uh, Case College at sight until 2020. Uh, I ask myself whether I, I want to uh, finish it or not. So I decided to pick it up again and I finished my uh, uh, thesis. And um, I finally, I graduated after six years of <laughs> this master study. And um, yeah, so this may be echo the first sentence I say. Um, it's not how fast you run, but... Uh, um, whether you can be persistent and with, whether you can continue with your aim. At the same time, I think uh, if we need to take the make to, to make a choice, family is always more important than career for me as a woman, as a mother. And but the second point of what I want to say is um, never give up uh, in a way that um, we can finally catch it up. Uh, it's not the result it counts. It's uh, um, that um, finally um, we keep the goal until the end. So this is a small story to share with you. It's never every day perfect uh, with accomplishment or with recognitions, um, but also with a lot of difficulties and the details with children and family. But I think as a foreigner, um, as also a doctor, as a researcher, as a mom, um, yeah, we can also uh, make the balance of uh, of our career and uh, and life. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I, you know, usually I ask this question to our guests. I say, "Can you describe in one sentence yourself?" But I mean, you did it in two words. But still, I mean, would you like to describe you yourself in one sentence? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm a trained. Uh, radiologist so I always believe that images have a lot of things one image is better than one thousand words this is why I choose radiology as my specialty and also oncology um, I started my career in a children's hospital 
And I see that how pediatric patients, they suffer disease. So I believe that we can use the imaging power to um, help cancer patients. So it's more than one sentence, but I will say that uh, using innovation image, and also now we have not only imaging to image the people, we also have uh, the treatment power. As you know, or, uh, we have radio diagnostics, so we can yes. also treat this imaging. And uh, so this is also a very exciting piece. Uh, coming back, you joined URTC, European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer, which is the basically their largest uh, similar organization in Europe and the leader in the field, in 2011 as a fellow. And already in 2012, in a year, you were appointed head of the Translational Research Radiotherapy and Imaging Department, right? This was a great success. I mean, how it happened? Thank you. Oh, you're really carefully looking to my CV. Indeed, um, you also were a fellow of uh, EOTC. I think EOTC is a very um, nice platform. They give us fantastic opportunity to learn methodology, the network, and also give their um, opportunities for young people. I think um, my experience as EOTC is really, really very appreciated. Until now, I use every day. The reason why I get promoted so quickly, I think um, there's a mix of factors behind. Uh, when I joined the UTC two weeks later, uh, my boss, uh, the head of transition research, uh, resigned. And it's the third one um, within one year. So they finally find out uh, why not just to give the chance to young people. And uh, she's motivated. She wants to do the work. Okay, she she just started uh, uh, her career, but we can see after one year, she did establish a lot of things because this year is like my uh, uh, in incubation time. <laughs> we have <laughs> one year instead of three months. And I was not hired for this position, but I did a lot of things as uh, uh, the acting head of unit. So um, in this regard, after one year, they say, yes, you know how it works. And you know how the imaging group works, radiotherapy group works. So yes, then carry on. So I, I think that indeed I was young at that time. After one year, I was I, I quickly get a promotion, but I also get one year uh their their incubation period to see whether I can do the job or not. Yeah. So opportunity, when you get the opportunity, you take it and um yeah, try to make it happen. Sometimes it's also fear. People will fear about new things and challenge. So uh, when the opportunity comes, just hold. And uh, if you try, you have 50% of the chance you will win. Wonderful. Um, now you are the chief medical officer of Metro Biotech, right? Yes. And please, can you explore a bit more about the company and what you are doing there and what the company is doing in the field? Okay. So my tool um, is a Molecular Image and Translational Research Organization. Um, it's a, a CIO, but um, uh, we also do a lot of clinical trials for uh, Dongchun Pharmaceuticals, which is a group, a very large group, work on um, nuclear medicine products, so radio pharmaceuticals in China. And uh, uh, we do clinical trials uh, from phase one to phase three, but we also do uh, investigator initiated trials focusing on radio pharmaceuticals. And this is the co-business we are doing. Uh, beside the clinical trials, we also have uh, the preclinical side. We do translational research, we do toxicity studies, and also uh, we have CDMO. So we also produce drugs, radio pharmaceutical drugs uh, for trials. So in brief words, it's organization for radio pharmaceutical development. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, and I, I, I was reading about your company and it, it was telling that this year you will open at the first in-human imaging center and a clinic in the US with SPECT and PET imaging, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. can you explore a bit more about it? Where it's gonna be, what it will do and how large you are going to expand yeah, that's exciting because um, 
my tool, um, we still we are still a middle uh, small size company, but our footprint that uh, uh, not only our headquarter in Nanjing, also um, in China as well, but also we have uh, our team uh, in US and in UK. So in US, uh, we just acquired a company called Xing Imaging. Xing was established in 2018, specialized in uh, companion diagnostics with radio pharmaceutical compounds. So um, we are now a uh, growed team. Um, our team, by the beginning of this year, we had uh, eight people. And uh, by the end of this year, we will reach 40 employees. And we also are uh, building uh, the infrastructures, which pro provide a new uh, tracers for our sponsors to promote transition research, including uh, phase one uh, unit in, uh, for um, first in human studies. So companion diagnostics, that means we provide the tracers and uh, we can also help to accelerate the drug. And the drug itself uh, can be any drug like uh, uh, drugs for SM disease, for Parkinson's disease, not, not necessarily always radio pharmaceuticals. So any drug, if we could use a potential um, radio uh, tracer, that can help for patient selection, patient stratification, um, to enhance their clinical trial success. So this is the aim uh, of our phase one unit uh, in US, in New Haven. Uh, very nice, uh, and good luck with that. I'm sure you will have a great success. Um, talking about success, in your opinion, uh, if not the education abroad, would you have the same success story? And yeah. what what role is played in your success story? <laughs> yeah, thank you for the question. I, I yeah, I cannot say that. I successful or not in my career, I believe that I just started. Um, I did the past 15 years uh, in Europe. That's a great opportunity for me to open mind. Um, and also ERTC as a very, very good platform uh, to bring me to oncology, very specialized and go deep to science, to methodology. That's, I think, this great value. Uh, so, yeah. So, for I will say that um, if I if I remain China, if I, I stayed in China, probably I'm still probably I, I would still be in hospital to be a doctor, to do um, day to day practice, maybe as you to be a pediatric uh, uh, specialist um, because I really, really love uh, my patients. But uh, when I um, left my country, the experience in Europe also opened my mind and also changed my opinion that um, only research can improve because day-to-day -day practice uh, that we can help patients and maintain and uh, uh, to also um, provide a solution. But if we want to improve, that only research will help us. So I think uh, uh, to keep going, I will dedicate myself also in innovation to see whether new technology can help us to increase uh, the survival for patients, to help the drug developers uh, to accelerate their development and bring more uh, good products for patients, which I think is important not only uh, to develop drugs, but also make those drugs available and accessible for patients. Very nice. Uh, look, oh. Going to the other part, within last 20 years, there was a huge kind of boost and development in the healthcare infrastructure and healthcare industry in China. And we see more and more drugs are coming from China. We see more and more clinical trials and breakthrough research is done there. Mm. What, uh, what to expect in coming years? Yeah, I think I'm 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 quite optimistic, um, because I do see that uh, uh, the Chinese government, uh, our regulatories really promote innovation and quality. 
this is a lot of efforts they are putting. And also, um, China has a very, very big population. I think to keep the health care, make it affordable, it's already a big, big ambition because it covers really the basic uh, health care for everybody. And in the meantime, um, we also realize that um, the basic health care um, is not uh, enough for everybody. And we need also build uh, new drugs to to satisfy uh, the, the unmathematical need. So also um, play a role in the new drug development, not only just to keep and to uh, afford uh, the basic health care. So in this regard, you can see the huge development in the past uh, 10 years. Uh, there was a lot of drugs uh, which were developed, especially in oncology, with immuno-oncology and now a lot of uh, ADC or uh, CAR T cells, compounds, and the development already being uh, approved. So I think uh, that, of course, has been promoted by uh, the policy. Also, there was a lot of uh, resources. Resources that including, um, I think, uh, um, so we have human resources, we have people who dedicated to that, we have money, um, because industry also get a lot of fundraising, invest in this uh, innovation compound, and also um, the promotion of uh, uh, our regulatory, because you can see also uh, the fast approvals uh, when we have uh, the new drugs will uh, go to the market. So, and also um, when, especially when the mechanism of action is already clear, um, outside of China, and we also uh, can have uh, uh, fast developed pathways, such as uh, uh, certain drugs, we may uh, waive uh, the phase two because we already know quite well the mechanism of action, so we can do uh, a quick uh, uh, safety run uh, with phase one studies and pass to the phase three. So that I think thanks to also uh, the global drug development, and that also promotes China uh, to bring those kind of drug development um, on the shoulder of a, of a giant. So I think this is the past 10 years, but for the future, I think uh, um, China may also um, invest more on the, the real innovation, not uh, me better, and uh, that will also uh, invest more and more in the uh, basic science, IND, and what we do see that this is quite a lot of resources that we're putting on. And uh, myself, because I'm, I'm working uh, in oncology, in imaging, I'm very focusing on radio pharmaceuticals. I see this is also a booming uh, field uh, in China, also worldwide. You can see that there were a lot of exciting merger acquisitions happened uh, in the past years. Uh, uh, and we see all the big farmers uh, MNC, they had uh, quite interesting um, merge actions uh, uh, recently. And this also gives uh, the market good signals uh, about radio pharmaceuticals. We always say that uh, maybe the biotech is now um, certain biotechs entry the winter period, but radio farmers, radio pharmaceuticals, there was no winter. <laughs> but I mean, maybe this is too <laughs> optimistic, but we do see that uh, there was a lot of resource. Uh, that coming to the field. And I'm I'm very happy to see that I'm part of it. Uh, yes, and um, how do you see that being a part of it? Just not being a part of it, but also like you have all these connections, you built all this network during your career, not only in China, but outside of China, importantly. I mean, how do you see yourself maybe as an ambassador, an advocate, or I don't know, a diplomat maybe uh, of kind of building this collaboration between the China and the outside of the like outside world? Yeah, thank you for that. It's a very interesting question. Indeed, I see that uh, uh, in China, we adapt very quickly. We have a lot of... Uh, uh, new drugs, but quite often those are me too or me better uh, drugs behind. So uh, um, I also see that uh, um, in reality, we do have a lot of things in the pipeline. We see a lot of the trials. I think in, uh, in terms of number, really trying to get a lot of increase um, uh, in the past years. 
especially in my field. Um, however, I see that the target there were very focused. A lot of PSMA, a lot of PAPI, a lot of SS um, uh, TR2 for uh, neurocon endotumor. So quite focused. And this is what I see. Uh, I see that um, also in the market value, um, US is still the leading piece. That's a reality. In the video pharmaceuticals, US takes 45% of the market. And following that, it's Europe. So Europe, meaning driven by three countries, France, Germany, UK. So I think thanks to um, my experience as being Europe, uh, so I've been living in Belgium for more than 17 years, and also very closely with work with our US team, I think there was a lot of new things that uh, we can uh, exchange, promote, and collaborate together. And um, so not only like before we, uh, we continue this kind of me to or me better, but really we can start in an early stage to see whether already um, when a new um, products, when they have the signals to have good effect, we can already introduce that in China and co-develop, or we can also to see whether scientifically there was some collaborations to promote those kind of development. And uh, uh, to not only be the faster follow-up, but also uh, be part of uh, uh, this innovation. I think if I could contribute in this field, this field, I would be very, very uh, happy to to do so. Yeah. Yeah, very noble. And also, um, since you know that the reason why we have the office in New Haven is we had some uh, so. We acquired a company, Qi Energy. So our team uh, is in New Haven, but New Haven, Qi Energy is owned by a Chinese company. So I, I think see. business sometimes we have country, but science we don't have. So we can have this kind of uh, um, interactions without, without really have a border. Okay, this is China, this is outside of China. But I think to help patients, the principle is whether we can bring new treatment to our population as early as possible. So I think that we can uh, we can really contribute and promote to facilitate this kind of uh, exchanges. Uh, you have also expertise in AI. And how is it going to change the field of radiopharmaceuticals in the future, AI? <laughs> That's really uh, exciting for me, you know, um, artificial intelligence is not a new word. I think uh, um, goes back early to uh, 1950s, people were already working on AI. I think now this period, why it's booming, is really thanks to the new technology because calculation power that's really booming the technology and also innovation. Um, in the radio pharmaceutical phase, we have a lot of pieces that we can use AI. Uh, simply that AI already implemented in the manufacturing that uh, we can have a shorter uh, acquisition time but have equivalent qualitative images so people can stay shorter time um, in the machine that it can also improve our productivity. AI can also be in the imaging so it can uh, automate detect lesions so that's for lesion detection and we can also do segmentation we can also do diagnosis so AI can also predict the diagnosis uh, by uh, our ways behind, by machine learning um, behind. And uh, another very interesting piece is prediction piece of the AI. So um, we can also use our big data, link with imaging information, link with clinical information, and also outcome of patient genomic information, try to help us to select more, um, so better compounds for drug development. Um, and also to predict whether the drug can uh, can be helpful or can be useful for the patient or not. So um, this is also a very interesting period to predict response and uh, and also help drugs. Some of the drugs can maybe even uh, can help us to do the drug repositionary. So existing drug where they can be using other uh, therapeutic areas. So those three pieces. Uh, in the manufacturing that can help to improve the image quality, reduce time, increase the signal, uh, so uh, the signals, 
uh, to help us to get better quality image. In the imaging diagnosis, can help us to detect lesions, segment, reduce radiology time, increase accuracy. And the third part is the most exciting thing for me is the projection for the future. Predictive response, select drug compounds, and also help us to reposition the drug uh, for new uh, therapeutic uh, indications. Uh, and so how do you see, I mean, in a short, like, how do you see the future of oncology? <laughs> That's a big, big, big question. I think, um, like, oncology is no longer um, really a type of disease, um, because oncology that also combined uh, a lot of knowledge together. As, as you oncologists, you pediatric oncologists, so now these days when you work, you, with, you work with multiple people, multiple talents. They could be your engineer, they could be your technician, they could be your uh, lab um, specialist. So the future of oncology, I think we, we will no longer treat one disease. It's really um, thanks to technology, we can empower precision medicine and also uh, to push forward um, cancer patient survival. I think there was a lot of things behind. As doctors by training, we still have uh, um, the, the basis of, um, of, of medicine behind, but I think with multiple talents contribute to oncology, oncology will be a um, really um, multidisciplinary with a lot of contributions, thanks to innovation technology that will help us to improve uh, the quality of life and survival of a patient. And this is also, I think, go back to my first point is, uh, I dedicate now my career in research. I no longer treat patients uh, uh, day to day, but we believe that uh, by that, that can improve really the survival of patients because only research can um, improve the current practice. Jan, what are your three top, uh, top three books to read? <laughs> oh wow! Um, yeah, that's that's very very good question. Top three books. Um, so you know, recently I'm reading some books, but that's really um, uh, let me. Um, Oh my God, uh, I have several ones uh, um, on my bat. Um, maybe I can just say one and then I will give you, because select three is very difficult, but just okay. to take one, uh, which I just recently finished. And uh, the book named uh, Build. Build? Uh, yes. H have you heard about no, the book? No, no, no. Yeah. Build, it's just Build, Build something. And this was written by uh, Tony Berry. I can send you also. Uh, maybe. Please. He, he was an inventor of the uh, iPod, and he was also uh, one invest a lot um, in uh, new technologies. Uh, interesting thing is that he also made mistakes. He um, he worked with a lot of uh, successful people in Silicon Valley, and this is also because we do AI. So <laughs> I'm very excited by all this technology. I think. He's a very good coach. He showed his way how um, he became first um, a talent, then become a good manager, then become a good CEO uh, and a founder, and became a coach. Um, this book, I think it's easy to uh, to read. Really, there was also audiobook. You can also drive and listen. So first time I read the book and the second time I read a, a I listened again um, in my car because there was a lot of philosophies. Uh, I felt that I had those problems in my day-to-day -day life. And um, his experience really uh, gave me some uh, spirit to uh, um, how to uh, find a way. And um, very interesting book. That's uh, combined technology, people management, and also um, human philosophies behind yeah. Uh, talking about human philosophy, what is the thing you are the proudest of? 
uh, philosophy. So, you know, as a Chinese, um, I I like quite a lot uh, uh, the way of Zhong Yong. That means uh, in in the in Western way is uh, uh, we need to put uh, the church in the middle of the village. <laughs> it's a little bit like this. So uh, you should get always the balance and uh, not too extreme and. Uh, I think this is this is very very interesting is uh, to always see the two sides of a coin and good things bad things and balance that. Um, a very good saying I think there's also something um, I follow quite often is um, um, you do actions and then you learn things and when you learn things that will implement in your actions. That's interesting because. When you have a career, you start to uh, summarize what you learned. And this is from your actions, you can summarize what you learned. And you can um, have those theories um, be noted. And those kind of things can guide you in the future. However, quite often, you never see this. So you don't have theories to guide you. So the only way that you can do is without theories and you move forward, you do actions. And you learn you fill in the gaps and you learn you fill in the gaps. This is something I learned also from Chinese philosophy is if you don't know, you will never know. You need to move forward and you will know and you correct your errors. <laughs> this is something you move, you go and, uh, and not never worry about to make mistakes because you only learn from your mistakes. And go again to a, a Western um, way to say that is... Um, I think I heard about one CEO, he shared his experience uh, to the interviewer and uh, he said, how can you be success? He said, um, I learned from success. How can you have your success? I learned from it in my mistakes. So success always <laughs> comes from mistakes. So this is also, I think, simply with the, the saying, the Chinese pop says, uh, you, you get theories from your actions, but you can only take actions, you will get your theories. Thank you Thank so you. much for having the time for right. us. Thank you for the opportunity and talk to you. Very nice talk to you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Anka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.